Well, Jamie, I think our cats look much like your arrow marked babblers. They are completely drenched. And isn't it exciting that we managed to find them? It took us a little bit of time because they weren't where we left them this morning or where Jamie left them this morning. They had moved a little bit further on and they found themselves a little thicket to lie in and get out of the rain. But it seems like some of the cubs are just woken up. Let's see, there's one of them just getting up now and going across the room. Look at that big stretch. Now, I wonder if it's going to go and try and see if it can suckle. Some of the cubs are still drinking milk from their mom, and so they go and they sometimes will go and have a little suckle. But look at that. Isn't that sweet? It's a little bit of affection between the two of them. So the little cub has gone to go greet its mom and just to reaffirm the bond between the two of them. You might find the mom will start grooming. There we go. You can see the long tongue coming out. And so the mom will lick the little cub. And there we go. It's going to go for a little drink of milk. First it's just going to groom all the water away and then it probably will settle down right there. Isn't that cute? So Asha, now that we're with the lions you want to know what animals will hunt the water buck that we saw earlier. Well, you're looking at one of them. These lions often do hunt the water buck. They are very good at hunting and they go after the water buck because the water buck is quite a big antelope. So it's a little bit bigger than something like an impala, which is our most common antelope here. And that will be enough to feed a lot of these lions. So that's why they'll hunt them. But you'll also find leopard will go after them, hyenas, wild dogs, and even cheetah. So all the predators that we see out here hunt water buck at varying stages. When they get to big adults like you saw just now, it becomes a little bit difficult for the wild dogs and the leopard because the water buck is a very strong, powerful animal. But the lions, because of their cooperative hunting, so they use one another to help in the hunting, they can overpower much bigger animals because two or three of them will latch on and they can then pull that animal down. So the lions use each other to be able to get bigger animals and that then means that they can feed the whole family. Now you can see the little cub has just started to suckle there now. It's got itself nice and comfy and it's now going to try and get milk. It's interesting because these cubs are getting to the age where they shouldn't be suckling too much longer. Um, the moms are going to start s stopping their milk production because the cubs are getting old enough to survive without it. These cubs do eat meat already but they are reliant on a bit of milk as well. So, Aya, you're asking where the male lions are. Well, Aya, in this particular region that we're in, the male lions, they don't spend all their time with the females. What we find here is that we get female prides, and they then have male coalitions that come in and out and will come to protect the territory, but then they'll also come to mate and produce the cubs. And so the males that we have here, we have four males that walk around together that are with this pride at times, and they will only really be here if there's a nice food item or if they're coming to mate or if they hear the lionesses close by then they come and investigate but they don't spend all their time with the lionesses um, they tend to want to go and patrol their territory and go and check and make sure other males haven't come in as well as to go and see if there's other signs of food because there's a lot of competition here so they would ultimately like to have no competition they'll chase the females away and try and eat it so the females don't spend too much time with the males if they can help it it's only really if there's an intruder around then sometimes the females will be close to the males or if there's a big carcass and the males find them on it then you find the males with them oh look at that yawn it's that kind of weather i think dark cold wet weather it makes everybody a little bit tired i think so that's why there's a lot of yawning going on and oh, shaking a bit of water off isn't that cute now these cubs are already quite old they were born in about april may so they're getting quite big now and there are six of them in total So, Aya, you also want to know when the cubs will start hunting. Well, Aya, the cubs are still a little bit small for hunting. They're a little bit too inexperienced. And so at the moment, the moms leave the cubs behind and they go off hunting and then they'll come and fetch the cubs if they get something to eat. And if they don't get something to eat, then they just come back to the cubs just to make sure they're fine. But these little cubs will probably in all likelihood start walking with the pride when they're hunting in about a year and a half to two years. And actually, they'll start to really 
be a value on the hunt and actually start physically killing things probably just after two going forward into three years by the time they reach three three and a half they're pretty accomplished hunters and they're able to do what they need to do and, and find food for themselves so it's going to be still a while that they rely on their moms even though they are suckling that milk production is going to finish soon and then they're going to rely on their moms for meat for the next year or so and in the beginning you'll find that the moms are going to try and teach these young ones so they'll make the, the little ones sit and watch and the babies will watch how the moms move and they learn the subtle little signs that the females have in order to communicate with each other when they're hunting because obviously when they're hunting they can't make noise because otherwise the prey animal sees them so for the first few times they'll just sit and watch and then slowly but surely they'll start to help out and in the beginning they're going to make lots of mistakes and they're going to alert prey animals to them and they're going to miss a lot of time but slowly but surely as they watch the older females they're going to start to learn exactly the techniques that they need and then they'll start to get it right and eventually they'll become a very tight-knit cohesive unit and if they're little females then they're going to stay with their mothers normally for life they'll end up being a part of the pride and so they learn early and then they become a very valuable asset to that pride now you can see that little one is grooming quite a bit so it's probably trying to get rid of all the water that's on it as well as all the little ticks that have crawled on it so now ticks are a little parasite that we get in this area that live in the grass and when the animals come and lie down on the grass then the ticks crawl onto them and then start to suck their blood for food and so sometimes they've gotten some ticks from sleeping all day because these lions would have been sleeping most of the day today and so they're just getting rid of any of those that might be on there also the Inkohuma pride which is the pride that we're seeing now in the winter when we had a very bad drought they had a bit of an outbreak of mange now mange is a little mite that also lives in their skin and causes them to itch a lot and they actually scratch so much that they can lose their fur and so it could also be grooming to get the last little bit of that out you can see some of the cubs have a few little black patches on the shoulders there and that's still scarring from where they've scratched themselves too much from that mite but now that it's raining the mite starts to go away the mites don't like wet weather at all which is really good for the lions well we're going to sit with these lions for a little bit longer and see if maybe they're going to wake up and get going and while we do that i believe brent has got a skull of a lion to show all of you they do indeed, Brent. They love a bit of bone marrow, but unfortunately they do not have stone tools like you do to get into those big buffalo bones to be able to access all that marrow. I'm sure they would love to, though. Maybe you can hire out your services at a later stage. But we've just been watching them, and they've, one or two of them have gotten up and moved a little bit. I think there's quite a bit of rain falling off these trees, so big drops, and it's just probably irritating them slightly so they've all moved a little bit and the one female has come out and you can see the cub has gotten straight to her to go and s suckle well Joey the number of lion cubs that a female can have is dependent they can have anywhere from one to eight but eight would be very very uncommon generally we find in this area the average is normally around four but I have seen as many as seven from a lioness before so you can get those higher numbers but generally we see sort of two to four cubs and that's the normal sort of amount of cubs that a female will give birth to which you can imagine quite a handful imagine having four cubs all at once and they all want to eat and they all want to play it makes a lot of energy out of these females they unfortunately spend a lot of time trying to discipline the little ones and make sure that they're not getting up to too much mischief but right now they're all being very relaxed like I say it's the typical bed where then lions are one of those predators that really like to sleep they're not the most of animals they like to spend most of their day sleeping and then they move around a little bit at night and I was talking to Jamie about this morning and she was saying to me that these lions walked everywhere last night so it's no wonder that they're quite tired it seems like they covered quite a bit of distance and I'm pretty sure that those vultures that we saw earlier is where they maybe had a kill last night because their bellies are quite full and this female in front if you look you can very faintly see a bit of a red color on her face so there's still a bit of blood on her face that would have been from where she fed off a carcass last night so definitely had a bit of a meal and I'm sure those vultures that we saw they were sitting where these lions ate now 
the thing is with those vultures, unfortunately for them, is that the rain did start, so even if the food is finished, they have to sit and wait until the rain goes away because their wings are going to be too heavy for them to fly, and that's why we went and investigated there, and there was no sign of any carcass, but in all likelihood, the lions ate everything, as they often do. But you can see she's getting sleepy, and that head's getting a little heavy. It keeps dropping down. And she just wakes up a little bit to look around. The rain is just starting to get a little bit heavier, so I wonder if she's not going to move into a bit more of shelter. You can see in the distance there that the horizon is becoming harder and harder to see with all the rain that is falling. So this weather system is coming from our southeast, and that's basically a southerly direction. And so that's why the rain is coming from there. See the now. It's too hard, it's too hard, we'll find that they're going to go back under the little tree that they were originally under and try and find some sort of way to shelter and get out of this wet weather. Now you see her ears are moving quite a bit. There's two reasons why her ears... Oh wait, look at that. Look at those teeth, aren't those incredible? You know, you would have seen the skull with Brent, so you can see how big those teeth are, but... Look at the cub hanging on. <laughs> The cub still wants milk. Is very unimpressed now that mom has walked away. <laughs> Shame, little one. Are you thirsty? It's not going to deter. It's going to carry on following mom and try and find a place to suckle again. But Aya, you want to know why these lions are so lazy? Well, the reason why the lions are lazy is because when they are active and when they do move around and they chase animals to hunt, they use a lot of energy. It's like, let's say, when you're walking, it's not too bad. But when you sprint and you try and run as fast as you can, you get very tired very quickly. And so the lions, when they try and catch prey, they have to run very, very fast and they use a lot of energy. And so they try and rest during the day so that when they actually do have to run, that they have their energy reserved and they're ready and they can sprint after these prey animals with as much energy as possible and so that's why they're quite lazy but you'll find if now if we were sitting here and something like that water buck that we saw earlier came walking through here these lions would wake up quite quickly they wouldn't look nearly as lazy they would become quite sort of focused on what they hear or see and then they would try and go towards wherever that was and you'd see them really start to probably actively hunt. Even though they full bellied and they ate last night, any opportunity they will take and they will try and then hunt again. So even though they look very lazy, when the opportunity does come, they do get up very quickly and they show quite a bit of energy when they do do that. Oh, you can see the one female, she got up and moved because of the rain getting heavier. And a couple of the cubs have picked up their head as well. I wonder where she's going to go. She's coming back now again. And let's see where she's going to lie. And she's going to go straight back to where she was earlier. Very clever girl. A bit of a shake, get rid of all the water that's all over her body. And where she's heading now, there is an adult female in there with two or three cubs, and they are so tightly bound together, it just looks like a heap of lions. I don't know if you can see in there, it's just all a tawny color, but there are probably four lions under that small little bush, and they're all trying to huddle together. And I'm sure they're getting warm from one another. You know when it's cold, sometimes it's nice just to go close to somebody, and then their warmth helps to keep you warm. So it's why they're doing that. And see if she's going to sit down there. There we go. Now you can see on her shoulder she's got a little bit of an injury there. So I think they've been fighting a little bit with some of the other female prides that we get in this area. It's also why they may be a little bit jumpy. Jamie was saying this morning that they were moving quite quickly. So I wonder if they haven't been fighting with somebody. Well, that's all we've got time for, unfortunately, with our schools today. I hope you've enjoyed the afternoon with us. It's been a great pleasure having you here. And while we carry on with these lines, we're going to go back to Jamie. I think Brent is just scared of Tom Brady. Although I must agree with him, rugby is far better than American football in South Africa. We are big rugby supporters. I'm running. Brent is going to blame that he's got a dodgy hip and a limpy leg at the moment. So, just excuses coming from Brent at this stage. But as you can see, lions are still fairly static. They haven't moved too much. They've 
gone up and down a little bit and the cubs have moved out a little bit the rain has settled slightly and so i think they've all come out just to get a bit of a break from being out under the trees themselves and there's a lot of grooming going on and a lot of growling and hissing at one another as they get too close to each other i think all is settled down now and they're so cute these guys are so nice to be able to spend lots of time with them again they were absent for a few weeks and They've been quite regular in the last week, so it's really good to have them back and see them a lot again. Look at that, isn't that the sweetest thing? It's like a little lion pile. So when it's wet and cold, the best thing is to go and curl up next to mom, place your head on mom and use her as a pillow, and let one of your siblings groom you. I think that's the ultimate life at this stage, although we're now woken up again. They are so cute, these little ones, and it's so good to see that they're recovering from this mange that they had. You can see it's still a few scars here and there, but it really is a lot better than what they were looking like a few months ago. So, really good to see, and I'm hoping with all the rain that we're having now that this will be the last little bit of mange that they get, and they'll be able to recover from this and grow into big, strong lines. You can see that one is grooming quite a bit and you might find what's happening is that the mom is not actually producing much milk and that's why she's grooming around the nipple area to try and stimulate some sort of milk to come out so that it can suckle it was suckling a little bit earlier so it could be the reason why it's grooming again as I was saying earlier that these lions now are getting a little bit old to be suckling all the time and so the flow of milk will be slowing right down so some, sometimes they just lick a little bit around there to try and s stimulate the female to release more milk but these lions a little bit earlier when we first arrived it was raining quite quite hard at that stage and you can see the little cubs are watching some of the commercial vehicles for those of you that are new viewers we do have commercial vehicles that run lodges around here and they have guests that they bring into the sightings so some of the commercial vehicles have arrived and you can see the cubs are particularly interested in all of this they're wondering what's going on and looking over their shoulders to see what this new big hunking great metal beast is and they don't seem too perturbed at all all right so we're going to stick with them for a little bit longer and see if the cubs start to wake up and start playing they often do in this cold dreary weather and talking of playing let's go to jamie who I believe has got some elephants that are in a very festive mood so unfortunately our lion cubs are nowhere near as boisterous or playful as what jamie's elephants are i was hoping that they would start playing a little bit but instead they've settled down to a little meal from mom and it's all very very sedate here at the moment you can see the lionesses have all settled down as well and they are all out cold i was hoping that they would wake up a little bit earlier when there was a bit of yawning and grooming i was hoping that we were going to get them up and moving and potentially looking around last night i know yanni was with them and she had them contact calling so i was hoping that we'd start hearing a bit of contact calling and that they would continue the search for the two remaining females that are not with them at the moment now you can see that this female is not excessively full so whatever they killed last night couldn't have been too big it must have been something that was just enough to fill the bellies a little bit and keep the cubs nice and full so I'd imagine it would be something small ish maybe a big male impala or a young kudu waterbuck one of those that was distributed between them also I suppose with this cooler weather they're going to be utilizing a lot more so that's why they've done just a little bit more than it would have had it been a hot sunny day see that they're all kind of tucked around that wattle. The wattle is a good tree for lions to go and sleep under. Um, it's got nice big leaf structures that overlap one another and so actually underneath there will be quite dry. So you can see there that's what it looks like and so all of those leaves will be protecting these lions. The only problem is every now and then they're going to get one of those big water droplets landing on them but I suppose that's better than a constant drizzle all over your head.
So, D.B. Cooper, you want to know what Inkuhuma means. Now, I know it's a tree, I just can't remember which one. VM, can you remember which tree it is? Brown ivory. It's a brown ivory, that's right, now I can remember it. So, it's a brown ivory tree, and I honestly have no idea where the name has come from. It's probably due to a, a place that they've were seen very regularly, maybe a name of a road or a pan that they were often around. That's maybe where the name has come from, but I don't know, maybe Brent can give us a little bit more information about that. I know Brent often has info about these things, so maybe he knows and we can ask him in the tent just now. But I'm not 100% sure why they were named that, I just know that it is a tree and it's the local language for a brown ivory tree. You can see the little cubs, they are looking around at the vehicles and they seem to be a lot more wary than what they were a few months ago. I wonder if maybe they haven't, with these altercations that they've possibly had with other lions, given all the scars that are on the females, that they're a little bit more wary of movement around them. Ultimately, in their first few years of life, they didn't have too many worries because they spent most of their time in a very small area. The Birminghams were with them almost daily and so they had very little to worry about. But now the females are sporting a few scars. I wonder if they haven't haven't battled a bit with some other lions and that's why the cubs are a little bit more skittish. Well, we're going to carry on watching these sleepy lions, but Brent, I believe, is out of his tent and has managed to find something large. Brent, I'm glad you think that I look miserable. It's very, very kind of you. I not so sure I agree so much, but uh, it's very pleasant actually being out here. Biam and I have found ourselves a perfect spot, and that's why we're sitting with the lions. Is we're not getting rained on too much. We're in the cover of a nice grove of trees, as you can see around us, and so it's very pleasant here. We're quite dry, and and there's not too much rain coming into the vehicle, so quite nice. The lions, on the other hand, are having a thoroughly miserable time of it. They're sitting in the middle of the rain, so not nearly as comfortable for them as it is for us. Um, but what they have done is very little. In the last few minutes we've had not too much movement at all. In fact, everybody's been fast asleep. This is the most movement we've had since you were last with us. I believe Brent was having a good time with the elephant as well. So hopefully our lions are going to start being like the elephants today with Jamie having quite active elephants and Brent having active elephant. It would be nice if our lions decided to be a little bit more active too and started to get up and move a little bit. Now, Brent was being very boastful and saying that he's so good he doesn't even need to leave the tent to find a member of the Big Five. Well, Brent, Jamie found elephants and I found lions, so we beat you to the punch. So the only way you're going to redeem yourself is if you actually find us a leopard. And I don't think that that's going to happen, so we'll see though. But there's the challenge. See if you can find us a leopard from the tent. Then I will bow to your ever so delightful ego that you have going at the moment. Now, this little cub, I think, can't get any cleaner than it is already. It's cleaned itself thoroughly this afternoon. It's been spending the whole afternoon just licking itself. And I wonder if it's just the rain, the novelty of being wet, and then getting rid of all that drops of water that are falling on it. And ultimately, I suppose every few minutes they're getting wet. So even though they've groomed a lot of water off, there's still some that's going to be collecting on their fur. Now, so Katie, you're wondering do lions on their own or lion coalitions hunt by themselves? Well, yes, they do. So the Birmingham males, are, which is the male coalition that we see in this area, are very effective hunters by themselves. In fact, I saw when there were still five of them um, about a year and a half ago. Oh, uh, sorry, Lou's saying if it's just a lion by itself with no pride or coalition, will they still hunt? Yes, they will. I have seen lone lionesses bring down impalas before. Um, I've seen them bring down bushbuck and wildebeest, even zebra. So they do hunt by themselves. I've seen male lions by themselves bringing down quite large animals <clears throat> like buffalo. So they do. If the opportunity is there and they can see that they can get something, they will take it. So it does sometimes happen without prides or without coalition members. 
but it's obviously a lot easier if you've got a coalition member or a pride member helping you especially now in the summer months when the animals become a lot stronger with all the food that's around most of the prey animals have become much healthier and stronger and fitter and so for the lions it becomes a little bit harder to bring them down in the winter months when they get a little bit weaker then you find that those lone animals are able to bring down um, prey animals very very easy so at the moment though it will be a very hard process and we saw that with the other two Nkuma females the Brent had them last week and they were looking very skinny and they tried to hunt all kinds of things I know he said to me that they were hunting Nyala and Impala and a warthog and they were trying and they were having not too much luck I reckon if it had been all five females together it might have been a different story and they might have been a little bit more successful now we know that these three girls with the cubs they've got a little bit more of motivation in that they've got to feed the cubs as well so they've done quite well we know they had a water buck last week and then last night they obviously killed something we don't know what but they definitely got something that was fairly decent that every single one of them has a slight bulge on the belly so they've done a lot better than their two pride members Miguel, unfortunately for them, it's time to then leave the pride and become a nomadic male until they can find a territory of their own. So what happens is, is these males, normally around three and a half years, sometimes around four, if they're lucky, they'll then get pushed out by the dominant males in that area and they'll then become nomadic and they'll have to move around until they can find an area that they can dominate themselves and that's either going to be by taking over from another male or by finding an area that no males are currently in so it's normally about three and a half to four years old that they get pushed out so sometimes depends on what's going on with the, the dynamics within the area that they're in so let's say these males that are part of the pride get to two and a half years and a new coalition of males comes in and overthrows the Birmingham's you might find that they'll break off a little bit earlier and they'll then go and do their own thing for a little bit longer period of time than they would have had the males stayed around the Birmingham's it's the nice thing about wildlife is there's never any set rule you'll find that these animals adjust according to what's going on around them so there is sort of time frames that we can utilize as an average but it's not always hard and fast rules that can be set in stone and we can say that definitely this cub will leave at that stage or these males will come in at that stage so it's a really nice thing to have when it comes to wildlife all right so we're going to still sit with the lions for a little bit longer i just want to see if maybe the females are going to start waking up and while we do that let's go back to jamie who i believe is still with her elephants as you can see still very sleepy wet kitties at the moment they are a little bit damp and not too much is going on at all they have not perked up for anything I was hoping that maybe there would be something that would come through and start waking them up a little bit and get them going but alas we have just sleeping wet cats at this stage but patience comes to those who wait as Brent was discussing this morning in the tent the one thing he's learnt is patience so we will exercise our patience and hope maybe we will get rewarded with something a little bit later the only one that's really stayed awake the whole time that you've been away is this little cub it's been still grooming itself as you can see it making sure that everywhere is absolutely spotless what good news is also is that it seems to be clearing up a little bit to our south um, as we can see the view that we had a little bit earlier was very dreary and rainy whereas now it's not so bad you can see the horizon a little bit clearer it's not nearly as much rain falling so that is good news hopefully we will end up with a dry start tomorrow or at least a dry finish this evening which will be very very welcome I know like I say that it's good that we have the rain and that it helps to ease the effects of the drought but I can tell you driving around in the rain is a little bit miserable it seems to soak in everywhere and gets into the worst places you <laughs> down your shoes and between your toes and everything gets a little bit soggy so I can sympathize with these lines a little bit and it's no wonder that they're not too active now it's going to be interesting to see where these Inkohumas are going to end up in the next few weeks they are buffalo specialists after all but there's very few buffalo around I haven't seen any tracks of buffalo this week and so there's not that much food available 
in terms of large animals and so I'm sure they're going to start pushing back northwards again to be able to start looking for buffalo up into the Manuleti and Buffalo's Hook. Uh, I was reading a study the other day of the Manuleti Game Reserve and they were doing the grass species that grow there and they reckon that that is one of the best places for grazing animals to graze and so that's why the buffalo spend a lot of time up there there's all these nutritious grass species that they love and taste really good and that's then what drags the lions up as well in the winter months those grass areas get so overgrazed that the buffalo then spread out a little bit and then we start to see those herds coming down into the sabi sands area and then the lions then obviously follow those buffalo in Oh, a little shake. Ah, we have some movement. And a little stretch and yawn. You can see that little belly swaying from side to side. So that little cub obviously got a good meal last night. Now it's going to just go and do some bonding with the female. It's a little grooming. Sometimes you'll find they'll rub up against the female's head. So May May Sane, have I got that right, Lou, who is a new viewer? Welcome, May May. I hope you are enjoying um, the show so far. You want to know what a group of lions is called? Well, it's called a pride of lions. That is the collective noun for groups of lions that are together. And if it is a group of males together, we call them a coalition. So if it's females and cubs, the pride, males, a coalition. Now there's another little cub that's come out and I think that little cub got a bit jealous that the one was getting food and that's why it's come out to see if there's some milk that it can come and feed on as well. I would imagine it's like making yourself a nice cup of tea on a cold day. The female body heat will keep that milk relatively warm so it's like having a nice warm drink to keep them nice and comfortable in this cold dreary weather. Oh, big yawn as well. So, Diana, you're wondering whether it's hard for a lone male club to join a coalition. It is indeed. Now, it's not a very common occurrence for a male cub to find another young male somewhere and to start a coalition together. They will never be able to join a big dominant coalition. So, let's say a young male cub came from somewhere else. They would never be able to join the Birminghams. The Birminghams will chase them is competition so it's competition for mating competition for food and so they're not going to tolerate that but what might happen is you might get a young male let's say from this in Kuhuma pride and let's say a young male from the sticks pride and the two of them get pushed out at a similar time and they find one another and sometimes they will form coalitions together i know the previous male that came out of this pride who we used to call junior he has met up with another male and is now starting to form a coalition and the two of them move around together they were seen fairly recently in the kruger national park quite far from here but they have met up and they've become a coalition so it does happen but it is a very rare thing to happen it's not very common at all and the likelihood of that lone male finding a coalition member before he comes across bigger dominant males is very very low it's in all likelihood he's going to come across big males and he's going to get killed so that's why males that are born in groups together or are in a cub situation where there's other males that are born to other females and can grow up together they generally are far better off than lone males and their chance of survival is far better as well so dj you are wondering whether I have ever seen, or if we ever see, lions with the white genetics in this area. Unfortunately not, DJ. Um, the only place that wild white lions occur within South Africa is, or in fact even in Africa, is in the Timbavati, which is a section just north of us in the Kruger National Park. There is a female there, and then there is a lone male that is in the eastern side of the Kruger National Park. Um, it's not too far north of where we are, but it's very far east, right up against the Mozambique boundary, and that's the only other white lions. So there's only two of them that are wild white lions at the moment, and so unfortunately we do not see them here. It is a recessive gene, so the female or male has got to carry that gene to be able to 
pass it on and for them to be produced. The interesting thing though is that it can happen here. It's not like it can't happen. You might find at some point there is this gene develops and you could get a white line being born here but I don't think so. It would probably require a male that comes from that pride that has that white lioness and that moves down into this area and, and mates with a female and we could then potentially get white cubs but it's going to be a very rare thing to happen. Alright so we're going to carry on with the lions and like I say we're going to see if we can get a little bit of activity out of them and be nice and patient and while we do that let's go back to Jamie and her elephants. Well they are still very very sleepy Brent. They have not decided to wake up at all. There's just one that's going to the toilet, but that is about it, and I'd be pretty sure that it's going to lie down shortly as well. Now, Viam and I were discussing the rabid elephant story, and we reckon a rabid elephant would be quite scary, but Viam's still of the firm opinion that a rabid hyena is way scarier, and we know that Brent from the past believes the same thing. Also, on the subject of the elephant and Brent, I'm not sure you can say that you found an elephant that walked into the tent even though he did find his caterpillar and his butterfly I'll give him that but the elephant pretty much walked into the entrance of the tent and that then constitutes him bumping and not actually finding now while we were sitting on the vehicle and the elephants have been I mean the lion should I say sorry they've been sleeping I was looking around our vehicle to try to see if I could find anything else to show you guys and I managed to find a beetle that's all I've got from inside the car so we have a little chest sleeping lines it keeps us entertained and it looks like one the cub and the female are having a little bit of a cuddling session look at that does that not look like the picture of absolute comfort on the back yawning paws in that is one happy little cub and it's stopped raining completely now so I'm sure that that cub is very happy to be little drier than what it was earlier <laughs> isn't that cute and now its paws are firmly placed in its mom's face well, warriors cat lover you're asking how strong is a lion's sense of smell? Well, their sense of smell is very, very good. I've seen lions at times pop their heads up and start sniffing into the wind. And that wind that's blowing, they sniff out buffalo that were over a kilometer away. So they were able to smell those buffalo coming. Maybe they also heard a little bit, but there was more the scent. You could see them lifting their heads and taking big deep breaths as the wind gusted past them so their sense of smell is very good it's also why they'll utilize their urine to scent mark is it leaves a scent and these lions then can come past and smell it and be able to know that they are there was other lions there and who that lion is remember they have that organ in the roof of their mouth called the organ of Jacobson that analyzes that chemical scent and it's able to then calculate what's going on so their sense of smell is really really strong and it is a major feature of their um, anatomy and, and the way that they survive and interact with their environment and you can see that little uh, cub has still got a very pink nose it's starting to get black on the edges but the middle is still very pink as they get a little bit older it's often a genetic thing but as they get older generally the nose starts to darken a little bit and you end up with a black nose when they get to adulthood so Marcy these cubs are now about let me just do the math they were born in April May so they're about eight months now that's how old they are um, these are the older cubs there was a younger litter that was born but unfortunately they passed away due to mange they were born in about I think it was end of May beginning of June and unfortunately with the mange that came around and, and then white muscle disease um, they ended up succumbing to those because they probably were a little bit younger their immune systems weren't quite as strong as the older cubs and they unfortunately passed away so these are all older cubs so Lou is saying to me that she thinks one from that litter is still alive. I'm not 100% sure Lou will we'll have to check it out and thanks for the update and the info. Um, it would make sense because there is one that is a little bit smaller than the rest 
but I actually haven't seen these lions moving in the last week. The last time I had them, they were running into the bush and then they found themselves a waterbuck meal that they ate. So I didn't get to actually see the varying sizes. And today they've been very stationary. They've hardly moved around at all. They've been quite lazy. So I haven't seen the cubs and can't really tell which ones are which at the moment. They're all kind of huddled together. But it would make sense if there is one that did survive. And we'll have to ask some of the viewers if any of you out there know exactly which cubs are alive and who who belongs to who and can help us out it would be great to hear from you remember you can use hashtags fire live or send it through to questions at wildearth.tv now it is getting a lot darker we're starting to get quite gloomy out here so i would imagine that these lines should start waking up and start um, moving around so hopefully we will see that although with these fuller bellies i think they might just take a little bit of extended nap tonight and lynn you're asking whether the lion's tummies will make a noise when they're hungry and if we will be able to hear it well and i have heard lion tummies and little grumbles coming from them but it's not really when they're only hungry i've heard it when they're full when they are just plain normal and when they are quite hungry as well so you can sometimes hear it in this case today they were a little bit fuller so i don't think we'd hear any grumbles for hunger they've definitely had a good meal last night so there's going to be none of that but you would be able to hear if there was a little grumbling of the stomach much like as people we can hear it it's the same thing with these lines oh good afternoon or should i say good evening seems like she's just rolled over and I don't think she wants to get up just yet. I think that's more just out of comfort than anything else. I always love when lionesses roll like this. It looks completely ridiculous to have this massive cat on its back with legs in the air. And you think of domestic cats, it's very seldom that they actually sleep like this. Domestic cats tend to sleep on their side. So it's a nice trait that the big cats have when they lie like this. And look at that one scratching its tummy with its paw. Well, it's stopped now, fortunately, but they do sometimes do it. They use that front paw and they run it along their stomach and basically alleviates the itch that they have on that chest area, which is quite cute. And you can see it's shaking its head every now and then. Now that the rain has stopped, I'd imagine the flies are going to be a bit of an issue. Raiz, you are wondering whether male and female lion cubs display different traits. Um, in terms of behavior, not really. The males might be slightly more dominating around carcasses and at playtime because they might be a little bit stronger than what the female cubs are. But there's no real trait in terms of behavior. In terms of their physiological aspects, you'll find that the males will grow much quicker than what the females will do. So if you had to put a male and female cub of the same age next to one another now at eight months, you'll find the male will be a lot more bulky. Now, if you have been watching the show and maybe you have seen the cubs of Karula, which is our female leopard that we see in this area she has a male and female cub and you can see the size difference quite clearly between the two of them even though they are the same age so in terms of physiologically yes there are a few traits that are slightly different also as the males get a little bit older so their mane starts to come out but in terms of behavior it's all pretty much the same they'll all be very playful they'll all spend a lot of time around one another grooming one another cuddling up to mom um, being very inquisitive of insects and it's actually become more down to a, an individual basis so you'll find some will be a little bit more timid some will be a bit more um, playful so it's not male or female it's more just an individual animal that will determine how they are but that activity was very short-lived as you can see the female is back to sleep again <laughs> she's decided it's not quite time to wake up but like I was saying it is getting very gloomy now and the wind is picking up so conditions are really good for them to hunt again I know they did eat last night but they are not exactly stuffed so if there's something around they could very well get up and start moving and hunting I'm surprised we haven't seen any of them actually putting their nose to the wind and just scenting just to see if there is anything we we're talking earlier about their sense of smell often you'll find in windy conditions the lions just pick up their heads and every now and then they just take in a few breaths of air and try and see if they can pick up any signs of animals around them. You can see she's very focused on that vehicle that just left at the moment. She's listening to it driving away and it's now starting to get out of our audio range and that's maybe why she's also not too concerned anymore. But you can see, look at how the ears are moving. 
So those ears are just like little satellite dishes. They're picking up all the little bits of sound that are coming out around us. And they're able to work out what's going on and hear any rustles in the grass or any th approaching threats that might come through. All right, so we are going to probably leave these lines fairly shortly. They don't look like they're going to get up to too much. And so while we do that, let's go back to Jamie and see what she's got for us.